Hey boys, welcome back to another Farlight 84 video. Today, I'm going to be teaching you guys the five most important tips in order to secure wins and get a lot of kills inside of Farlight 84. So these five tips will definitely help you guys improve, so make sure you stay tuned to the end of the video. Now, I've seen a lot of tips videos across YouTube, across a bunch of different genres of games, and a lot of them seem pretty basic. A lot of them almost regurgitate the same level tips. So when I made these five tips, Keep in mind, I am a former professional player that I wanted to try and include as many helpful things that's not going to be as generally obvious as other people would probably have in their videos. So starting off, and these are in no specific order either. They are all important in their own right. I just want to preface that. Starting off with the fifth tip, use buildings and cover to always split your sight lines between teammates for your advantage. What this means is if you're getting pushed by multiple people, you're gonna wanna use cover to put cover in between you and the other teammate, like of the enemy team, so that you're only dealing with a one-on-one -on -one engagement. So using cover to actually split a pushing team into different one-on-one -on -one fights is very helpful, especially when you are soloing or solo squatting because that team's just gonna run at you and you're gonna be able to manipulate that cover to actually end up in a lot more 1v1 situations instead of a 1v3 situation. The fourth tip is try to stay mobile, listen for shots so that you can third party picks and rack up a lot of easy kills. This is done by a lot of extremely high level battle royale players and it's by using cars or vehicles or any level of movement in order to travel very quickly inside or across the map. This is very helpful because you can end up typically ending up in a third party more often than not on the upper hand and it's also going to help you rack up kills very very quickly and it's going to help you be aggressive throughout the entire match. This is very helpful for a lot of reasons because it can keep your aim warm and you're going to be used to getting in fights and you're always going to be able to push advantageous fights typically and it's super awesome so if you guys don't utilize vehicles and you don't pull up on people a whole lot and you just kind of like chill in a building or you're in a stationary area most of the game definitely get in the vehicles and actually travel throughout the map get in those fights get that experience and you're able to catch a lot of people off guard by just playing faster than they are so for the third tip Anytime you're solo, always prioritize healing heavily. This could mean broken from your team or just solo squatting in general. If you know that you were up against one, just assume that there are more people other than the one. But say you're in a fight, you're always going to want to prioritize healing heavily. I know I even have a tendency when I have a squad around me, I will push fights like to limits that they probably shouldn't be pushed just because I want the kill before my teammates will get it because I know that we are all extremely competent. Except when you're playing solo, that is a very dangerous game to play um, because that one person that you think might pull up behind the teammate that's in front of you that you're currently fighting might turn into two or three and then you're stuck and there's nothing you can do about it. So make sure you're always prioritizing healing if you are up against anybody by yourself because there's not gonna be that teammate to back you up or to take pressure off of you. For the second tip that we're gonna go over, um, sometimes disengaging is the best re-engage if you don't feel you have the upper hand. This is very important if you find yourself in a fight where typically the enemy has high ground, you're going to be in an overpressure situation. So to alleviate that, just disengage from the fight and try to get away from them and then try to re-engage them at a different angle or maybe even a different POI or catch them on their rotate um, just to make sure that you are always in the winning position of a fight. You never really want to be in a losing uh, position of a fight, whether it's cover or, you know, height or, you know, amount of people that you're up against. No matter what it really is, you never want to be on that losing end. So if you typically find yourself at a disadvantage, just reposition. Just leave the fight. Um, there's nothing saying that just because you engage the fight means you have to play out that fight. Um, that's something that a lot of people forget in BR and it, it is very helpful because now you will also have information on where that team is and or is probably going as well as more information about the people that you find up in front of you. So it's super helpful anytime you guys feel overpressured or you don't feel like the fight is winnable, just reposition. 
using med kit. Always make sure to finish your kills fast or relocate. This is incredibly important. And this is the last tip that I got for you guys. And this goes into what I said earlier. You have very experienced players rotating around in vehicles and they're moving quickly. So they're going to be listening for gunshots. So for you as a player, and when you engage in a fight, you generally want to engage in the fight and take a pick as quickly as you can because you want to get the fight over as quick as possible. A lot of the time you'll notice if you end up in like a sniping battle and it just goes on for too long and you're just like trading shields back and forth for a long time, what that's going to do is open you up to the possibility of people third partying you as they drive around. And that's going to end up for a typical losing situation on your end. Um, so make sure that you try to finish the fights and or get out of the fight as quick as possible. Like I said, you guys can always reposition and move on to the next fight in order to make sure that you're securing kills as quickly and as f efficiently as possible throughout the map. Now, if any of these tips you apply in your gameplay actually help you improve, let me know down in the comment section below. So I really put a lot of time into this, into thinking like, what are the five tips where I could tell you guys and you immediately implement in your gameplay and notice a change and an improvement in your gameplay. And these were kind of those tips that I landed on for Farlight. Um, if you guys do enjoy Farlight 84 content, consider subscribing for the best Farlight 84 content on YouTube. Like, we're going crazy, guys. We got a new setup. We got a bunch of stuff for all you OGs. I'm sorry it took so long, but we got our set up and running, and it's absolutely amazing. So I'm going to be pumping out a ton of content for you guys. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. My name is Ben Agro, and I will catch you guys in the next one.